he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy. My sidekick and I were making a leisurely ride home from Railhead when we got our first inkling of trouble. Everything had been unusually quiet in our county, so we took the time to attend to some business for the Bar 20 Ranch. Red and I don't have to do a lot of talking. We pretty much understand each other. Anyway, we hadn't said anything for several miles. And all at once I saw it and we reined in. burn down the rest of the place. But you've got us all wrong, miss. Oh, no, I haven't. This time I've got you just right. Right where I want you. But, ma'am. I'm not ma'am. Well, then, uh, miss, uh, you see, ma'am, we're, uh, this is Hopalong Cassidy, and we're here to help you. Papa. Who are these men? This man claims to be Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah, put your gun away, Lily. I never met the gentleman, but more than once I've seen him. I see you've had some trouble here, Mr. Uh... Vandermeer. Vandermeer? You're new here? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think I understand. Oh, you'll never understand what we've been through in the three years since we settled Lily, here. Lily, please. Uh, gentlemen, let us go into the bunkhouse to talk. My boy is lying there. He's been shot. I'll take a look at him. Oh, Papa, now that there's someone to help you, I'll ride at the bucking mule for Dr. Peterson. Well, allow me, ma'am. Oh, well, it won't, it won't be too much trouble, Mr. Uh, Connor, just call me Red. I'm Hopalong's pal. Thank you, Red. <laughs> He's been unconscious. Only a little while. It didn't look so bad at first. Well, it's not too serious. It isn't bleeding badly. That slug's still in there. Just what did happen here? Oh, so many things have happened. I wish we'd never heard of this terrible ranch. Yeah, she's quite right. But now we give up and go back to Kansas. A man can take only so much, Mr. Cassidy. But what, what started all this trouble? Uh, sit down and I'll tell you the whole story. We have to wait anyhow for the doctor. The Vandermeers told how they had come from Holland seven years before. They had settled on a farm in Kansas, but soon heard the call of the West and settled here on land obtained from the government. They worked hard, tried to be thrifty. When their ranch prospered, the other, less successful ranchers became hostile. At first, they warned Vandermeer that foreigners weren't welcome here. When he replied that this country was discovered, explored, and expanded by foreigners, 
their threats turned into violent action. I recalled hearing six months before that some of Vandermeer's cattle were mysteriously poisoned. Still later, Vandermeer riding in the hills was attacked and severely pistol whipped. And today? Early this morning, some men rode in and began to shoot up the place. Klaus, who was at the woodshed, returned the shots. These men set fire to the shed. You can see what they did when he tried to run for safety. Well, what about the other ranchers? Have you tried to get them to help you? <laughs> who would help us? They don't want us here. Besides, there doesn't seem to be any law here. But there's a sheriff in this county and there's a judge in Bucking Mule. <laughs> the sheriff, that's a laugh. He's right in with the rest of them. As for the judge, we've tried to get him to help us, but, but will he lift a finger? He will not. Am I right, Papa? Yeah, Lily. So when Klaus is well enough, we pack up and go back, where we can live in peace again. But you can't allow yourself to be scared off. You have the same rights as everybody else. And to my way of thinking, the least of them is worth fighting for. But there are too many again. Your friend is coming back. But without the doctor. The doctor don't come. You're delivering a baby. He can't get here until later. I've got to get that bullet out of there. Would you please give me some boiling water? Red, you better get him out of here. When I worked over Claus, I wondered who was at the bottom of Vandermeer's troubles. I disliked anyone using the flimsy excuse that Vandermeer was a foreigner to cheat him out of his holdings. It wasn't honest or ethical. It wasn't American. May I help? No, I think I'd better do this alone. Thank you. You wouldn't have a cup of coffee, would you, ma'am? Oh, yes, I do have. How about you, Papa? No, I wait. Come along. Coming back. Who? They can look. Vandermeer! Hey! Recognize any of them? The ringleader is Simon Cosgrove. Cosgrove? I've run across him before. He operates a little ranch around here. He's done some cattle rustling, too. Hey, Vandermeer! What I do, Mr. Cassidy? You go out and talk to him. Invite him in the house. Leave the rest to me. I do what you say, but I feel better if I don't do it. Go on, hurry now. I hear you had a little trouble out here today. Those masks didn't fool me, Cosgrove. I know you shot my boy. That you got to prove. Anyway, that's not why I come out here. So why did you come back? I'm ready to buy this place. I don't think you can offer me enough. But uh, let's go inside. We talk it over. Yeah? Take it easy, boys. I know. So I'll buy you out for a dollar an acre. Lock, stock, and barrel. You are joking, Cosgrove. Five hundred dollars for everything? The cattle, the horses, the land, and equipment? Take it or leave it. I ain't such a big fool like that. You're making a mistake. He's doing exactly right. You can keep your nose out of this, Cassidy. 
You and that numbskull sidekick of yours. I wonder how you'd look without any teeth. Wait a minute, Red. Cosgrove, this isn't the first time you pulled a stunt like this, but it's gonna be the last. Mr. Vandermeer's keeping this ranch, and you and your boys are gonna let him strictly alone. You're just a small-time rancher in my books, Cassidy. Your talk don't mean a thing. If you think it's just talk, why don't you start something? It's a good idea, but I'll pick the time and place. the deal's off. And get on your horses. You're asking for trouble, Cassidy. Sticking your nose in where it don't concern you. You're gonna get it. I'll be around. Get out of here. Indications pointed to a well-organized conspiracy against the industrious Dutchman Vandermeer. It seemed to include the sheriff and the local judge, who had taken an oath to enforce and defend the law. Red and I rode into Bucking Mule. You're John Vandermeer's lawyer, is that right? It is. We're friends of his. This is Red Connors, and my name is Cassidy. So you're Hopalong. That's right. Say, I've heard a lot about you, but never had the pleasure before. Come in, sit down. Thanks. Well, needless to say, right now, Vandermeer needs friends. So we hear. Well, he's been getting a raw deal. Pretty raw deal. I try to do what I can, but I can't go into court without a clear-cut case. And you think Vandermeer had a clear-cut case? That's right. You see, the men who caused him trouble have always been masked. He may suspect their identity, but he can't prove it. What can we do to help Vandermeer? I don't know right off. But I'll dig right in and find an angle. You can depend on that. I'll do everything I can to protect his rights. Well, if you're looking for a starting point, you might swear out a warrant for Simon Cosgrove. What makes you think he's mixed up in this? We don't think, we know. Well, I'll check with Vandermeer. If he wants to swear out a complaint, I'll handle it. Oh, in the meantime, where can I get hold of you, just in case? There's a line cabin up back of Vandermeer's place. We'll hold up there. Good, good. Well, I'll get in touch with you if anything happens. Thanks. Maybe I should have been a lawyer. What brought that on? Well, a lawyer can stay neutral and still help people. What makes you think he's going to help? Well, you heard what the man said. Well, what he says and what he means are two different breeds of horses. Well, sometimes it makes me sore. What makes you sore? You always disagree with me, and you're always right. Oh, cheer up, Red. Someday the unexpected may happen. Come on! I just saw Cassidy riding out of town. What'd he want? He wants a warrant sworn out for you. Well, if he hadn't interfered, Vandermeer would be on his way to Kansas or dead. And you and I don't own that ranch right now. Cassidy isn't stopping me. Well, that's easy for you to say. You sit here and twiddle your thumbs while I take all the risks. Anyway, we can't do anything with Cassidy on the loose. He's always showing up at the wrong time in the right places. So now's our chance to get rid of him. Oh, just like that. So now's our chance to get rid of him. How? I know where he's heading. Oh. Well, that's different. Well, 
I build a fire in the summertime, I usually have something to cook. Well, we're cooking up something. Where is it? I'm proud to be along in a minute. What'll be along in a minute? Cosgrove's men. Say, one of us talking the wrong language. Why do you suppose Hicks was so anxious to find out where we're gonna hold up? Well, so if he wanted to tell us anything, he'd know where we were. No, he and Cosgrove are back of all this trouble. Oh, but why the fire? So they'll see the smoke and think we're here. We ain't here? Right. We're out there. I don't get it. You will. Come on. Red and I hid out near the line cabin. Before long, Cosgrove's men showed up. The trap we'd waited for was working perfectly. trying to help Vandermeer save the ranch, however, the lawyer advised him to clear out right away as a U.S. Marshal was coming for him. Come on. According to Hicks, Vandermeer was wanted by the immigration authorities for fraudulent entry into the United States. Red and I made the fast trip to Railhead to send a telegram. When we got back to Bucking Mule, matters began to come to a head. Warn me if anybody shows up. Oh, sure, sure, Hoppy, you know me. That's what worries me. Remember what happened last time, Cosgrove? Where's Hicks? I wouldn't know. I'm waiting for him myself. Sit down, Cassidy. Maybe we can make a deal. Same kind of a deal Vandermeer's getting? He's getting just what he deserves. Folks here about don't cotton the foreigners. That's a lie, and you know it. You're the only one that doesn't want him around here. Because you want that ranch. I happen to know I talked to the folks down at Railhead. They'll feel differently about it when they find out Vandermeer's in the United States illegally. Where did you dig that up? From the U.S. Marshal, only a couple of hours ago. You finally stuck your neck out, didn't you? Get him out! Outside. Just a minute. Back in the saddle, boys, we're riding. Stay outside, though. Why did you come busting in like that? Oh, I wanted to warn you. 
Them fellers found their horses and they're looking for us. Found the horses? Their horses weren't in the street and I had no doubt where they had gone and to what purpose. I decided Red and I had to do some tall riding. While Red and I again rode toward Vandermeer's ranch, Lawyer Hicks was making the last bold play on behalf of Cosgrove and himself. is a frame-up. Did they head toward Bruxton? Yes, they've only been gone about five minutes. Come on, Rat. at Vandermeer and his captors. I told Red when the shooting started to grab Vandermeer and hurry him back to his ranch. Red begged to stay with me, but I figured someplace up ahead was an ambush, and I didn't want Vandermeer to fall into that. a glimpse of Cosgrove and his men coming out of the hills. During the exchange of shots, Cates decided to make a break and for some unknown reason headed back to Vandermeer's place. That suited me fine, especially when I saw Cosgrove and his men follow Cates and me. Glad to see you, Marshal. I started out the minute I got your telegraph. This one who claims to be my deputy? Yeah, that's him with his bare face of hanging out. I'll take special care of him. On your horse. There's another one for you. You too. Well, oh, you're in the clear, Mr. Vandermeer. You're not wanted on any charge. <laughs> we thank both of you for helping us in our troubles. Oh, we had fun. Red and I always enjoy a fight when it's for a good cause. I'm sure your troubles are over now. We'll always be deeply grateful to you. Uh, Marshal, can we help you over to the railhead with your prisoners? Sure thing, Hoppy. Come on. Get him out of here. 
Goodbye until then. 